Right guys, today I'm in deepest, darkest Essex, yeah. Whittam. Uh, I'm joined by Barry and we're in Barry's Blues Barn. Welcome. Nice and to meet you. Thanks for talking to us today at Two Finger Media. Now, Barry's Blues Barn is literally, I suppose, a lifetime's collection of your memorabilia. Would that be correct? Yeah, that would be the correct uh, terminology, I'd say. And art. Um, I've got some wonderful friends that are artists and uh, not in the sense of they sell art, they just are good at art and uh, they've done me some wonderful stuff so yeah it's um, quite nice and basically got told by the wife get it out of the house so I had to build somewhere to put it. And would this be um, basically yeah, like you say basically you've outgrown your house and yeah, you thought right yeah. I, I, need, I need somewhere to get this on the I'm, show. I'm sort of one of life's collectors, like I've still got my first gig ticket on the wall there, um, Lou Reed 1979, um, got a Kinks ticket from 1980, all gigs that I attended and um, yeah I just never threw stuff like that away, so I thought I'd make a place to put it all. So Lou Reed 1979, is that your most prized ticket possession that you own? Or no, is there more recent ones? There's some pretty good ones. I mean, I've got the specials 30th anniversary tour, um, which makes me feel old. I've got one that um, the two remaining members of The Doors done a gig in Italy a few years back, Ray Manzarek, and um, I was out there for that, so that's pretty uh, special. Um, yeah, it's just, I think some of the better stuff is what I get um, by. A, artists I see recently, like mostly independent artists, they sign posters and send them to me or I've got them from their gigs and they sign them for me. It's, it's, it's personal stuff, yeah, which, personal. which you can't buy a lot of the time. No, that's it. Like, I've got some great things down here from Lucy's earrings, which she, she calls me Bazza B. So she'll sign it to Barry B and Bazza B and stuff like that. So It must be um, nice, I mean we had a quick chat earlier uh, and you were saying this all started on a whim. You thought you'd contact somebody, uh, Jack, for a yeah. start, because um, you'd seen him do an acoustic set. Yeah, I'd seen him playing acoustic sets, and I'd just run the idea past him if he would come and play a gig at me barn. And um, he said yes, and it was so well liked, and people really enjoyed it, that I thought, yeah, I could do that more often. So that's where it went. And how long ago is this now? This was in 2017. So a couple of years. The first, yeah, first gig. Because even what I mean, even coming to your place, you you are this is literally your back garden, with an oversized shed, but it looks fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, um, it's just like I say, it was a, a bit of a selfish indulgence to um, build somewhere like this, and uh, do the because I'm always going to gigs. To have a gig come to me was a great option. When I weighed up. Um, say the cost of train fare, Hotels cost of food, yeah, staying in a hotel, drink, and I put past most of the acts about um, a sort of budget I could like basically pay, and most of them, well all of them said yes so far, so all good. So you're also saying that you quiet for the rest of this year at the moment, you're off on holiday to Spain. Yeah. Um, are you looking to ramp it up next year or are you just going to keep it the same sort of calm and relaxed and yeah the thing and with being on a council estate is you don't want like a massive four-piece band rocking out till sort of 10 o'clock at night well you might do but no, yeah I want, i'd disagree. love to yeah <laughs> but um, it might get a, a bit uh, more attention from uh, the local council or whatever but yeah um the thing is not being so big i sort of want to be fair weather gigs because I've got stuff to put out, like canopy outside, and um, if it's freezing cold and there's only a few, we can put the radiator on, which is nice, and it stays warm in here. But um, yeah, I'm sort of a fair weather gig guy, and because of the budget and having everyday bills, I tend to stick to one a month. It must be nice, though, from a personal point of view, that you can, when you get that yes back, where you've asked somebody, it must be. That really warm fuzzy thing. Oh god, well. yeah, it's a massive rush for me because they come into my house. Yeah, I've been a music fan since I was a kid. I mean, I'm of an age where um, T Rex was sort of like the first person I listened to, 
as a kid and I remember having them records with a fly on. Right, so, um, yeah, and I've seen everyone virtually from the Stones to Bowie, um, Roxy you, Music. You've seen the bands when they were good. Yeah, so to have the bands that I love now, which is more up close and personal, to come here and play is, yeah, that's a massive buzz. A the, massive. I mean, at the moment, or the last couple of years, certainly, there's been a massive upturn in this. I hate to say genre because it's not, it's, it's more than that. But this bluesy based, rock based yeah. um, community. There's there's a lot of new artists that are coming through, or not or older artists that are now coming through to the to the mainstream public. Um, like today you've got Jack Hutchinson coming here to shoot his latest video for his upcoming album, which I know you've had a listen to and it's it's phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. And if that doesn't hit the heights and I don't know whatever will. No, that's that's what it is for me, is um at the moment all my favourite artists are not massively well known. They're not like you're not talking like Ed Sheeran's and Beyonce and stuff like that. That's the mainstream. That's October. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, I, I prefer, like I say, I prefer the blues rock genre, and um, I just love the stuff that's being put out there that uh, these guys are doing. And yeah, I love it. So to have them come here is the best feeling ever. Because you had uh, Aaron and that last Aaron Gardner, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, Aaron Gardner and. Uh, Mickey Pearson, um, or Mikey as he likes to be called, sorry. Um, I've had um, Dave Ferrer, I've had Benjamin Basford. Benjamin Basford actually wants to record a live album here, like, which is a massive, massive buzz. Must have quite cool acoustics to Yeah, to it's, that. that's what uh, all the people that have played here have said. Well, the, the best compliment I get from everyone that's played here is they all say they want to come back. So come on, some more than that. Yeah, so yeah. So being in a a council estate or an area like this, and I mean, you are surrounded literally all sides. Um, how do the neighbours cope with well, music? The, the be all and end of it is it's acoustic, so it's not too bad. Um, there is issues with my neighbours where one side have moved in; it's a rented property. They moved four dogs in the back garden and they was barking every night all hours of the night waking everyone up nothing's been done about it so i've waited for someone to knock on my door and complain then i can tell them exactly what i think of them and um, basically put a flea in area if you're going to complain about a bit of music you've got to sort your dogs out or the other side they've got four kids that they scream at like as if they were um, dock workers, and I'm talking the F word, yeah. and there's not one of the kids over five. So, and and this this is a couple that will get up at 3 a.m. and row and slam doors. So if they come round and say to me, "Oh, it was a bit loud last night," they're going to get told exactly what I think. So, well, I think subliminally they're all getting this wonderful music that's coming out of your blues bar. So, they're, well, so they they subconsciously go out and buy. The thing about, yeah, <laughs> maybe <laughs> I'd like to think so. I mean, I've had some good feedback. People that have come, that are friends of mine that have come, have actually found these guys that I love, and they're buying their albums, which they would never have done. So that's a great boost for me. But it's um, again, it's acoustic. If if I shut the doors, you can't very rarely hear anything past the door. So, and the wife's when she stays in the um, dining room, I always ask her like, how loud does it sound? And she says, I can barely hear it. Right, so. No. And, and we've got a pub up over the road. If they put a band on, you can hear that down the whole street. So much worse, like so. But also, you, you keep it to weekends. I take yeah, it. So it's a Saturday, night. Saturday night. So nobody, ninety yeah. percent of people won't have work the next morning. So you, you're not going on one, two, three in the morning playing. No. So uh, it's, people need to really sort of embrace it. I think, especially with what you're doing, like that needs to be. There's a lot of more independent people putting on shows these days. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I live close and work with um, Crazy Cowboy Alec hmm. over Reddingway. You know, I do a lot of stuff with him. And um, again, he's trying to smash the system his way. So you don't get the corporate side, you don't get the, the special treatment if you pay loads and loads of money and all this stuff. Just try and keep everything on an even kill and keep 
bands available to the public, I suppose, like they used to be. When you used to queue up outside the back of a venue exactly. Exactly. before a show or whatever and wait to sign something. I think a while ago it was what sort of sunk home to me was I was going to see the big bands like the Stones and and my, my some of my pet hates are you're going to watch a, a band you love on a video screen. Well, I might as well just get a DVD out and watch them on that. Unless you because, pay fifteen hundred pounds, you're going to be thirty. Yeah, you're going to be on what of that. And my biggest pet hate, which everyone that knows me knows, is I cannot stand people talking while an artist is trying to perform. So when they come here, the first and cardinal rule is no talking while the artists. It's disrespectful. Yeah. So I never understand people that pay for a ticket to go and see a band and then talk all the way through the said gig. We had this a few years ago. Um, I mean, I used to do a lot of stuff with Cadillac 3. Mm. I don't know if you know the guys. Yeah, I know Cadillac. Guys. Right. Um, well, they brought Whiskey Myers over for the first time a few years ago. And the first gig they played was in Leeds at the Wardrobe. Right. Now, in the States, drinking is first, music is secondary. The majority of the gigs, people go for a to lash it up and, and like you say talking they're talking most of the time through and the music is uh, kind of in the background whereas over yeah. here it's the opposite way we go for the music and drinking is kind of part of that yeah they couldn't understand whiskey mars talking to cody afterwards he couldn't understand that the crowd were were kind of watching them rather than being rowdy that all the way through their first songs because mm. they'd never experienced it they thought it was because the crowd didn't know their stuff or didn't like them until I explained to him, no, we wait until the end of the song, then you'll get like rapturous applause. And he sort of then he sort of took it on board. Even at Norwich, he played um, Seven Nation Army by the White Stripes because he thought people might know it yeah. as opposed to their stuff. But he's got his head around it now. But I think it's Americanism compared to the UK yes, side. Yes, I mean, it's a, it's a, like, it's a fine line. You go, it depends on where you go. Like, if you go to London, the Ain't Nothing But The Blues Bar, you can have some fantastic artists on there, but people are coming in there from straight from work and they're chatting about their day and stuff like that. And so you're going to get talkers in places like out in pubs, people go in pubs and the band's on and they'll talk while the band's on. But my, my hate is that if you've got like a like um, Broadstairs Blues Bash, for instance, the whole place, the whole town is generated around the music. So everyone that's there is basically going to see the music, mm. but you still hear people talking, and I just can't understand. I mean, you, obviously you have Matt Long here recently, and yeah. when he's playing Catfish, one of the songs, he does a really quiet bit, doesn't he, where he literally turns the volume off, and he's picking yeah. just on the yeah. stage. And you, you're just waiting for someone to, to rabbit. it. it yeah, they yeah. could be 100 yards away, but you'd still hear him because it's so quiet. Well, one of the best gigs I went to was I see Joe Harmon at the Jazz Cafe. And there was a couple there talking and I was literally, people to tell you that know me, I was preparing myself to throw a few fucks into them <laughs> and um, literally as she'd done fragile I think and it got so quiet, you, everybody, I mean even this couple, everybody stopped talking and you could have heard a pin drop and I, I don't think I've ever experienced that. The hair stands it, Yeah, open. so. Um, yeah, that's, that's, I mean, I've got signs in my blues barn, basically, if you talk whilst the artist is performing, then you, you'll get told to fuck off, because... You need t-shirts, mate. Yeah. Without um, a back. <laughs> I just, I just, it's a, to me, it's about, if you buy an album, if I buy an album of an artist, whether it's the Rolling Stones or Jack Hutchinson or Sophie Reed, I want to listen to the music. I don't want to put the album on and then talk to my wife mm. about our day. I'll put the album on and listen to it. So why can't people grasp the fact that if you're going to see a gig, you're there to listen to the music, not talking about um, what mortgage deal you can get, or which recently happened when I went to see Roscoe Levy and Marcus Bonafanti, mm. a guy enthusiast, enthusiastic about the gig before it started, then started talking to a woman about his mortgage rates while they was performing <laughs> an acoustic set. And when I asked him to be politely, for, which makes a change for me, I asked him politely to be quiet, he basically said, no, I'm talking. So I said, it's Broadstairs, there must be a hundred pubs in Broadstairs you could go to and talk about your mortgage. 
but you choose to come to one where there's an acoustic act on. That says, yeah, to the that says masses about you, about you, not about like the guys. So. And I hope your mortgage rate goes up. Yeah. Hope you added that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he eventually got told to fuck off. So. <laughs> Which is quite right too. I mean, it's the same thing when you get support bands on, because obviously people like Jack and that do a lot of support slots as well for bigger artists. And there's so much disrespect for the support bands. Was that's a lot of the time some of the best times to see these up and coming artists and bands is when you go and see a set like that and they win you over, they've done their job and you've yeah. gone, fuck, that's so cool. And then you check the guys out. I saw a prime example of that was I went to see a young rebel set at the borderline and the band that was on before them was Broken Hands. Yeah. And they completely blew me away. They was rock and roll personified. Yeah. They'd done a 45 minute set and literally my jaw dropped. So yeah, I love to see a support act. And I like it when the main act takes the time to come out, even if it's just to watch one song. Or yeah, I mean... It shows I, respect. What I do find though, and I'm probably gonna get a lot of stick for this, a lot of musicians are as bad as some of the public about talking through other people's set. I had a prime example last week, I went to Norwich to watch a guy called Tom Malowski and there was a group of young guys that performed about three sets before and they was the loudest out of all the people in the audience while Tom was trying to perform. And it just amazes me that you think, well, you'd probably want people to be quiet while you was performing, so why don't you take that when you're in the crowd? Probably because a young been drinking after their set. Could be. Could yeah, be. like you say, they'll learn. They'll learn one way or another because people will tell them. So that's the good thing. The, the community seems very strong in keeping the ethos of what you what you're trying to build. You there's know? there's a like you said earlier. There, there's some good underground um, gigs being put on at the minute. There's a guy called Alan Bates. Up yeah, in Fleet, yeah. And um, he's he's got the same sort of uh, idea as me. He puts gigs on, you've got a guy called Richard Dunning, Tuesday Night Music Club, they put gigs on yeah. and they're putting signs out and emphasising to the people, don't come to a gig and talk, come mm. to a gig and watch the band. We've got people down my way now, there's a couple of sprung up, Harlington and Fleet is a great yeah, venue yeah. Um, and also the Echo Hotel Music Club run by Bird. And yeah, Lepinger. I know Bird, yeah. Well that's, now that's two venues within 20 minutes of me that have got the structure to put on some amazing acts and they have done already. So it's it's there you know i've yeah. got penny penny who runs penny lee who does the haven club in oxford yeah. i mean she's she's had some fantastic people she had ben paul down she has sari shaw all these amazing artists you know i think skinny molly are there in yeah. october or november and again but it's her like alec and Redding. you know they're doing it off their own backs like you are yeah and it's great and yeah, people it's need just... to support it rather than go well yeah but you're not corporate we're not going to get the same experience. you're going to get 10 times more of an experience because you're up close and personal you could even hear the sound check because you're there we had uh, like last night with aaron and mike um bum notes were being played sometimes but that's all part of it to me it's natural I, yeah i don't want i don't want um echo machines and enhancers and all stuff like that i just want i want pure music you want it to be real as well yeah so yeah, I'm happy with. Um, I'm happy to have like the bum notes, and I'm happy to have um, just basically, like you say, real music being played. We had um, Chris Barris a couple of years, well, not this year at Ramley Man, but the year before. He played an acoustic set, and all along the Watchtower, he forgot the words twice, but not one note was missed. But it's just funny as hell. But it's yeah. so uh, humility's there, you know, and it's great to see this artist that's just been on the main stage this year. So humble in the way they play, and it's just, it's just great. And everyone's just enjoying it, so. I think for me, it's, um, my favorite type of album is a live album. Yeah. When you hear on the bum notes, or you hear things that go wrong, or people shouting in the crowd, and uh, all, do all dodgy artists turning all up. All dodgy late. artists <laughs> turning up from the interview, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can't get no more personal than like two feet away from an artist that can perform brilliantly and uh, yeah and if they do cock up it's, it's just like you say it's human. Well talking about artists 
Jack and the band, Felipe and Laz, have just turned up. I can hear and see them. Yeah. So we'll wrap this up now. And thank you for inviting me today to come and witness this wonderful place. Um, hopefully Thanks I'll come back and, and see some shows here. And uh, enjoy the video shoot with Jack. Thanks for talking to us. Cheers. Thank you.